So basically, this Quarks application is a special Quarks interface that represents a command that's run after Quarks is started. So what's going to happen is Quarks is going to start, and then it's going to run this run method. And then as soon as this method returns, the application will shut down. And the return value here will be the exit code if something else hasn't already exited with a different exit code. Now, the way we actually tell Quarkus that this is the application that we want to use is with an annotation, which is at Quarkus main. So that's all we need to create an app that will run and then exit. So then if I do NVN install the package, so why is, why is there the need for Quarkus main? Like, could it just detect that it's Quarkus application subclass, or do you want to maybe have several in the project we, or just select one? You can actually have several of them in the, in the project. So this Quarkus main annotation has a name. So you can actually give each application a name. And then in the configuration, you can reference the name that you want to start. And you can actually change. Yeah, so that's a build time property. So in application.properties, you can put quarkus. I think it's a quarkus.application.name. Can't actually remember the property off my, the top of your head, my head. But you can actually change which application is run based on that name. So that's why we have this annotation. But it's also possible that you might want to have some kind of hierarchy of different applications. So this just means that it's explicit which one you want to launch. So now if I run that application on um, if I run that application, just directly, this terminal does not support. Um, and it hasn't worked. Yeah, get, get what have right. I forgotten? <laughs> what have I forgotten? Ah, yeah. There we go. So now we'll see that my Quarks application has run. It said, hello world and it's quick. But it's also produced a lot of noise while it's doing that. So we might try and fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do is disable the banner. So that's quarkus.banner.enabled equal false. Bye bye banner. Quarkus.log. We, we might do a banner pod, uh, podcast to equals. show how you customize the right. banner, but it's going to be later. So that should be a bit better. So now we'll install it. And run. And there we go. Hello world. Now, this is fairly simple and not particularly interesting at the moment. But this hello application is actually a CDI beam. So we can actually do use all your Quarka services directly in here. So we can use another like hello world type examples. We might have a greeter service, um, which I'll make into an application scope theme, public string greet, return one four. And then we can just inject that greater service directly into our application and just use it the same way that we would use any bean. And this applies to basically all the services that Quarkus provides. So things like the entity manager or REST clients, as we'll see in a moment, we can just directly inject them into our application and use them as normal. So, and then we'll print line service.greet. Now, so what? I, what so I far, love, I've just give me give me a sec. So what I love in uh, in in Max's demo was that he had this re regular application, uh, and then he created a, a runner that was exercising either some tests or a specific path to the application. So he had essentially a CLI entry to the REST endpoint he was uh, also exploring, which which is where the the magic of like being able to inject your services is is coming in. Like it's literally the same code underneath. You just had a different UI to so, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. So if you have like Hibernate entities and you want to say write some code that manipulates the database and then exits, you can just import our Hibernate extension. You can then uh, use those entities and just use the exact same code for running command line applications. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is rather than actually packaging it up and running it directly, I'm going to use Quarkus Dev Mode. 
So this is by the way you can run that. Dev. By the way, you can compile them that natively and have an actual native executable, right? Or will you show that? Yeah. Later? Yeah. Perfect. Um, I will, although it'll cause my computer to heat up. But yeah, I'll, I can show how you can compile it down to the native as well. So now we're running dev mode, and it's executed our greeter service, and it's exited. And now dev mode just basically waits to see what you want to do. So now I can press enter to have it run again, and it just runs the same thing again. But dev mode will also pick up changes. So I can change my code here and press enter, and the changes are immediately live. Now, I'm going to talk about dev mode in a bit more depth later, but this dev mode for command, like the dev mode version for command mode, just lets you make changes and quickly iterate on them without needing to sort of rerun the application each time. 